Advancements in farming and warfare technology, while very much welcome, rendered horses useless and unwanted. Unless you're rich, of course. The result was neglect, which pushed a lot of breeds to the brink of extinction, with some still struggling to recover to this very day. In this video, we have the oldest domestic horse breed, the only hypoallergenic horse, and the biggest horse to ever exist. Number 19. The Caspian Horse Caspian horses typically average between 39 and 47 inches in height, for which they could be considered ponies. Granted, though, the general gait, character, and conformation have seen this Iranian native classified as a horse. It's probably the oldest domestic horse breed, dating as far back as 3400 BCE, according to the remains that were uncovered in 2011 at Gohar Tepe, Iran. For years, the little horses have been a darling among the Persians until the Islamic and Mongol invasions erased any mention of them, with the burning down of libraries and destruction of monuments. In fact, most researchers considered the Caspian horse extinct until 1965, when Luis Feroz, American-born Iranian horse breeder, rediscovered a few specimens. This discovery has been pivotal in the efforts to keep the breed alive, although it hasn't been a smooth ride. For instance, the herd Farouz had established early on was constantly attacked by wolves, and there was once a ban on keeping horses which forced a discontinuation of the breeding program. Galicino Originating in Mexico, Galicino horses date back to the 16th century during the Spanish conquest of the region. The founding stock was made up of horses that carried the conquistadors, their troops, and slaves. These initial breeds are somehow unknown, but they're mostly believed to have been the Spanish Galician Pony, the Garano from Portugal, and at some point, the Serraria. Most of the horses eventually ran away or were intentionally released into the wild to form feral herds. Thanks to the locals, though, they were brought back to domestic life and have remained so since then, even finding their way to the good old U.S. Thanks to the proud parents, Galicino horses are noticeably short, which is why they're most favored by kids in competitions. Generally, though, they're just as strong as any other breed and are able to handle the weight of a full-grown adult for extended periods. Canadian Horse This breed has been around since the late 17th century during the reign of Louis XIV, the longest ruling monarch in history. With a shipment of just a handful of horses, the numbers grew so rapidly that by 1709, the government had to limit the number of horses per farmer, although the rule wasn't fully enforced. This breed would later find its way into the U.S., where it was crossed with other breeds to develop new ones. But about a century later, the healthy numbers were almost decimated when thousands of Canadian horses were exported and subsequently killed during the American Civil War. This is basically the genesis of the breed's troubles, as the numbers have always been a bit unimpressive. According to the Livestock Conservancy, there are less than 5,000 Canadian horses in the whole world. The Shire Horse while rare, Shire horses are well known for their massive size, averaging between 64 and 72 inches tall. They're widely considered the largest and tallest horses and have even held records for both of these categories. For instance, a Shire named Mammoth remains the largest horse ever recorded, weighing some 3360 pounds and measuring 86 inches tall. Thanks to these massive sizes, Shire horses were valued for their immense pulling power. But as with any draft horses, they later got replaced as a result of mechanization. Aside from the mechanization, limitations on the amount of livestock feed farmers could buy were introduced, effectively reducing the ability of most shire keepers to maintain their horses. This saw thousands of them getting slaughtered and a lot of breeding studs getting shut down. While the numbers have improved over the years, the breed is still struggling and has been termed at risk, critical, and vulnerable by different animal organizations. Serraria Native to the Iberian Peninsula, Serraria's real origins are still largely unclear as the breed has been lost to mankind until the 1920s when a Portuguese zoologist ran into one during a hunting trip. The general consensus, though, is that the breed could be a descendant of the primitive wild horses endemic also to the peninsula. This is supported by the breed's primitive markings, like dark muzzles, ears with black tips, horizontal striped legs, and black dorsal stripes. That being said, studies are still ongoing to determine the exact relationship between Serraria horses and the other wild ones, such as the Przewalski's horse and the Tarpon. Moving on, the individual horses here are generally small, averaging heights of close to 60 inches, although a few of them may even be shorter at about 51. Despite that, they've priced for their endurance and hardy nature that enables them to thrive on relatively little food. Akal Tiki The Akal Tiki is one of the oldest horse breeds still alive today, dating back thousands of years of the present-day Karakum Desert in Turkmenistan. 
Here, the nomadic tribesmen selectively bred the horses for agility, speed, and endurance, crucial qualities for raiding at the time. And given the harsh, hot, and cold conditions of the desert, the Alko Tiki also grew naturally hardy, getting by with barely enough food and water. The horses are known for their metallic sheen, which is usually golden for the cream-colored coats and silvery for the gray ones. Other recognized colors also include chestnut, bay, and black, cremello, and perlino. So far, at least 6,600 Alko Tiki horses exist around the world, although a majority of them are in their native Turkmenistan. The population took a major hit during the Soviet Union era when the central government ordered the horses to be slaughtered for meat. Carolina Marsh Tacky Also referred to as simply the Marsh Tacky, the breed can be traced back to the 16th century horses that were brought to the U.S. by Spanish traders, explorers, and settlers. In the early days, though, members of this breed were wild for their larger part. Locals only rounded them up when they needed some work done, which included stuff like hunting, herding cattle, and general farm work. The horses are mainly known for their role in the American Revolution War, where they proved to be quite useful. Given their short stature, they could easily navigate through the lowland swamps of South Carolina as opposed to the larger European breeds that were used by the British. Once spread throughout South Carolina, today just a few of them remain, about 276 in total, consisting of 153 mares and 123 stallions. And of all the available mares, fewer than 100 of them are actively involved in breeding. Peruvian Paso The Peruvian Paso breed was developed during the Spanish conquest with horses from both Spain and Panama. Huge cotton and sugar plantations meant farmers needed to travel extremely long distances, which required a smooth gated horse. As the ideal breed, the Peruvian Paso inherited this and many other traits from the Andalusian, the Janet, and the Bar breeds. Interestingly enough, the breed has maintained the different traits for over 400 years, a fact that's been attributed to its isolation and a particularly specific selection by the breeders. Interest in the breed would later dwindle with the construction of roads, but its popularity outside Peru kept breeding going, especially in the past 30 years. Still, the numbers aren't that great, with the last estimates placing the Peruvian Paso horses at 25,000, give or take. So, they're in a considerably better situation compared to the majority of breeds in our video, but still, there's some work to be done. Takara Horse These Japanese natives have supposedly been around since 1900, but it's not yet clear what breeds the foundational stock was made of. The breed itself had been largely forgotten until 1943 when a professor, Shigeyuki Hashiyata, discovered over 40 individuals on Takarajima Island. The already small population would later dwindle rapidly in the 60s since most people were seemingly not that interested in raising or preserving the horses. Thankfully, this changed a few years later, and a breeding program went into full swing, which has seen the numbers rise to just over a hundred. The Cleveland Bay Considered the oldest horse breed from England, Cleveland Bays are well established by the 1700s after 50 years in the making. Even after the 18th century, work on the breeding continued as Arabians and thoroughbreds were introduced consequently, creating considerably lighter Cleveland Bays than the previous, heavier, well-muscled horses. The breed thrived for hundreds of years until the First World War, when the horses served in the cavalry where lots of them were killed. Luckily, the dire situation was quickly corrected by the British government's breeding initiative, but the numbers dropped again during the Great Depression. By 1962, just four purebred stallions remained in the UK, of which the Queen bought one personally, so she's among the people responsible for keeping the breed alive and gradually improving its prospects. Przewalski's Horse while they're the only surviving wild horse subspecies, Przewalski's horses aren't exactly free-roaming. The known populations today are bred in captivity, which has certainly helped keep the breed alive. That being said, quite a few of them have been released into the wild in Mongolia, where the numbers are reportedly on the rise. According to National Geographic, the horse's wild population first became threatened in the 60s as the subspecies was crossbred with other domesticated horses. So even though their numbers are trending upwards, their genetic diversity might forever be lost. Aside from crossbreeding, other possible causes of the Przewalski's horses near extinction include stiff competition for water sources from domestic animals, hunting, and loss of habitat. The Curly Horse As the name indicates, the Curly Horse breed is known for its curly hair, which will usually vary in appearance and intensity from one individual to another. That is, minimum, maximum, or extreme. For the minimal cases, the curly hair will be inside the ears at fetlocks, and the horse will spot a kinky mane and tail. The maximum case, on the other hand, is marked by curly hair all over the horse's body, which extends to the eyelashes and guard hairs, accompanied by a dreadlocked mane. 
Finally, the extreme cases are marked by, well, extreme curls. Aside from the unique coats, curly horses are also known for being the only hypoallergenic breed, something that hasn't been understood yet. Certain research suggests that the horses might be missing a protein responsible for allergic reactions in the other breeds. Something else that's also unknown is the breed's origin and development history. The Clydesdale Horse Development in Scotland in the 18th and 19th centuries, Clydesdale horses are among the tallest, standing at 64 to 72 inches on average. The massive size comes with incredible strength and endurance, valuable qualities for a breed that was developed for long working hours. In their early days, the horse performed all sorts of heavy tasks, including hauling coal, agriculture, and carrying around soldiers during wars. The uses have changed over the years, but a good deal of the horses are still very much involved in similar, physically taxing environments. The Clydesdale horse's troubles began in the First World War, as a good deal of them, and we're talking thousands here, were used consequently and leading to serious decline. Also around the same time, most farms were pretty big on mechanization, which eliminated the need for horses and subsequently their breeding. Today, though, they're still popular among horse lovers, especially as carriage and parade horses, thanks to their feathery feet. Suffolk Punch In the old times when this breed was being developed, punch was specifically used to describe a short, stout person. And that's how the horses got their last name, being fairly well-muscled and noticeably short. Aside from Suffolk Punch, the breed is also known by the names Suffolk Horse and Suffolk Sorrel thanks to their Suffolk County heritage. They didn't really become popular until the early 1900s, despite their 16th century origins. The breed wasn't just limited to England, though. By the time it blew up, it had been exported all around the world to countries like Germany, France, Argentina, Spain, and Sweden, among others. During this time, it served as a draft horse, taking on various tasks on large farms. Despite being around for the past 500 years, they're still pretty much identical to their founding parents in relation to especially their chestnut coats, being easy does, and of course, their stout physique. American Cream Draft The breed is fairly easy to identify thanks to the cream or gold champagne color of its coat, an inherited trait from the same colored mare identified as just Old Granny. For some reason, Old Granny's origin remains largely mysterious, but she's said to have been born in either 1900 or 1901. Thanks to the cream coat of her foals, people really paid a premium for them, consequently contributing to the popularization of the breed. That being said, the breed's popularity and subsequent population growth didn't really last that long. In 1950, barely 50 years after the first horse was born, the breed was officially recognized by the Iowa Department of Agriculture. This coincided with a period when horses in general had started becoming undesirable as work companions. And when Ryerson, one of the breed's main pioneers, died about seven years later, American cream drafts suffered a major blow as their numbers went on a free fall. The Nakota Horse a North Dakota native, the Nakota breed is a mix of a wide range of breeds, including thoroughbreds, several colonial Spanish horses, and a few other harness horses. Both feral and semi-feral, the breed was nearly wiped out in the early 1900s when authorities and ranchers went all out on thinning the herds to reduce competition for livestock pasture. Luckily though, a few of them did remain around long enough for the establishment of the Theodore Roosevelt National Park in the 40s. During the park's construction, the only remaining herd was accidentally trapped within the park's fence. While this herd helped keep the breed alive, it has since been mixed with other breeds, so the remaining inside the park today are not really Nakota horses. A breeding program started in the 1980s by Frank and Leo Kuntz using some of the horses from the park that's part of the reason we still have the breed around. Hondra Vita Horse Most of the breeds here, while on the brink of extinction, can at least be found outside their areas of origin. For the Andravita, though, this is not quite the case. The horses are found strictly in the Greek region of Lydia, where they've always been since the ancient times. Ancient time here refers to as far back as the 4th century, when the horses were part of the Athenian cavalry during battle. In peace times, though, the horses were used for transportation and general riding. The breed has no doubt been around for a long time, but its stud book was established fairly recently in 1995, which was around the same time the population was fast headed for zero. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. The Hackney Horse The Hackney Horse breed was developed in Norfolk, England in the mid-1700s by crossing the thoroughbreds with the Norfolk Trotters. 
The breed would then become extremely popular a few years later thanks to its incredible ability to reach amazing speeds as a light carriage horse. Today, the breed is valued for its unique trot, consisting of springy, prance-like leg movements. So away from their light carriage duties, they're pretty ideal for the show ring as their graceful trot is a guaranteed showstopper. Their dwindling numbers also make that trot even more valuable. Today, Hackney horse breeders are hard to come by despite concerted efforts to increase the population. And even worse is that just under 3,000 of these horses exist, most of which are found in Britain. In the US, the population is said to consist of as few as 200 individuals. See you all next time!